Hey there, Rob Burtman, founder of Family Budget Expert, and today we're gonna go over my four R's of how to avoid credit card debt. So whether you're in credit card debt right now, whether you don't ever wanna get there and you wanna know how to make that happen, or if you've gotten in, gotten out, and don't wanna go back, all these tips are gonna help you today. So the reason I'm covering this is because if you Google how to avoid credit card debt, the advice, honestly, is not all that great. In fact, some of it is downright condescending, like, like, don't spend the money if you don't have it, and pay off your balance in full, or keep a budget. And yeah, you know, technically that advice is right, but is it actually helpful? Are they actually giving the tactics to make sure that you can pay your bill in full each month, or make sure that you don't over overspend? Because that's if, if they're not giving you that advice, then of course, it's just a platitude that's not at all helpful. And then on the other side, if you Google how to get out of credit card debt, it's a whole bunch of financial products, financial incentives to get you to refinance the debt to, so that you can then become a client of theirs, right? So I really want to make sure that you understand the real ways to avoid credit card debt, and this will actually help you get out if you are in it. So, but before we get in there, in order to know how to avoid it, we need to know the common reasons of why people get into credit card debt in the first place. And really, there are four reasons. The, the first two reasons are kind of the stuff that you would think about, but in my mind, the last two are the ones that are uh, probably more common or like more sort of traps for getting in. So probably the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, you have some unexpected expense. Something happens with the house, something happens with the car, something happens with the kids, maybe it's you know a sports registration or something like that. Something comes up that causes you to spend more than what came in. That's a very common reason that people think of why they get into credit card debt. The second reason is maybe you've had a loss of income. And in order to make ends meet, in order so you can cover all your bills, you've had to put some stuff on credit cards so you can cover your housing payment or your car payment. And these two reasons, by the way, you know, it's okay to have a season in credit card debt if you need to do that to make ends meet. But we don't, what we wanna do is make sure that we can get out of it at some point and have that season where we get out of that. So those first two reasons are probably the more common ones that come to mind. These next two are probably the ones that don't necessarily come to mind, but are actually, when I work with clients, these are the two main reasons why people really get into credit card debt. So three, the third reason, and the, one of the most common ones I see, is that people don't know that they're actually overspending, right? They don't know they've overspent. It's like they see their bank account and they're looking at that, but they're not looking at the credit card debt, the credit card bill kind of growing, all of a sudden bill comes, wham, end of the month, all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, we can't cover this bill. How do we do this? How do we overspend? So the next month we're like, okay, we'll carry a little bit of balance this time, but then we'll work our way out of it. So we pay attention a little bit for the first week of the month, then all of a sudden, you know, we're still looking at the bank account and the credit card debt bill is building and building, and all of a sudden, wham, bill comes, there's not enough to cover the bill, and we stay in credit card debt. Rinse and repeat, this happens over and over and over again and it gets people into the cycles. So one of the four R's is gonna cover this. Now, the fourth reason why I see people get into credit card debt is honestly, they're just kind of become kind of numb to it. They get used to it. And what we wanna do is, it's okay again to have a season if the, if the times of life demands it to get into it. But at the end of the day, we wanna shake ourselves out of that. We don't want to get used to it. We want to shake ourselves out and say, we want to slam the door on credit card debt and never go back in ever again. So if you feel like you're getting used to it or you've gotten used to it or you're kind of numb to it, we need to really make sure that we get rid of that mentality and kind of get back into financial thriving. Because honestly, credit card debt is kind of the gateway debt to sort of lackadaisical finances. Okay, so now we know the four reasons why people get into credit card debt. Let's talk about the four R's of how to avoid it. So the first R, R number one, the most important financial habit that you can do, review, okay? Review your spending. And I recommend a five minute weekly spending review, not a budget, but a weekly spending review where you're taking a look at your transactions for the last seven days and how much you've spent month to date. And if you look at those two numbers once a week, you can adjust so that you end the month on target. At least you're aware, right? And if you wanna take it to another level, you can actually set weekly spending targets. Essentially what happens is you take your fixed bills, the big bills like 
housing payment comes out first to the, you know, the first week, car payment, maybe second week. And then what you have is all the leftover money you can spend and you spread that out amongst the different weeks. So in week one, it's probably gonna be your most expensive week because a housing payment comes out, maybe childcare expenses come out. But what we need to know is, okay, we have this number that we've spent. Are we on target to end the month where we want? And if not, we gotta pull back for this next week. But if we're ahead, we can have a date night, right? The idea is that you have four opportunities to adjust and you're looking at the bill so it doesn't surprise you, right? So review, that's the most important R. And in fact, no matter where you're at in your financial journey, weekly spending review is going to be the most important thing, okay? All right, so R number two, we're talking about reconciling. And what do I mean by that? So this is kind of the idea that, uh, you know, we're just looking at our bank account over here, seeing that the number has not really gone down. But over here, the credit card, the credit card bill is going up and up and up. So when I say reconcile, what I mean is reconcile the amount of money in your bank account minus the amount of your credit card bill. You know, in other words, think of it like it's a debit card. If you have a debit card, every time you spend, it's going to auto deduct from your bank. But if you have a credit card, your bank account stays the same. The credit card company is fronting the money, then they send you the bill and you, then all of a sudden you have this big ramp down in your bank account. So, but if you take the time using a budgeting app or if you just take a look at the balances, don't just look at your bank account balance to see where you're at for the month, reconcile it against the credit card bill. For example, 5,000 in the bank, 4,000 in credit card bill so far, you net out $1,000. That's your true net cash position. So that's reconcile. Number three, rehearse. We all have those months where the expenses are gonna be higher than what we're used to. And the question is, what's our contingency plan? Can we rehearse coming up with this extra money so that we can cover those extra expenses in the months that we need to? Are we gonna take a little bit of extra money out of our savings account? Are we gonna divert some funds that have been going to automated, automated savings or like the kids college just temporarily for like a month so we can take all those payments going out to those areas and bring it back so we don't go into credit card debt. So that's the third R, rehearse. The fourth R is restore. And what do I mean by restore? We need to lay our financial foundation. We need to restore our financial foundation. And in my mind, that's one to three months of cash in the bank or savings account before you get paid. So kind of like an emergency fund, right? Two is credit card debt free. And then on the investment front, it's if your employer offers a match, like you put in 6%, they'll match with 3%. We wanna make sure that we're putting enough money in there to get the maximum match for the retirement plan. So if we're checking all three of those boxes, then we're good to go. We can move on to our other financial goals. But if we're not there yet, if we don't have that financial foundation set, if we have some credit card debt, we don't have a lot of money in the bank, and, but we're also saving for kids college and we're you know, putting money automatically into investments and stuff like that, or making paying more on our house, for example, we wanna focus that money back on restoring that financial foundation. Because if you do have those months where you're spending more than what you're used to, guess what? You've got the cash on hand to cover it, right? So we wanna restore that financial foundation. That's the fourth R. So we have review, we have reconcile, we have rehearse, and we have restore. Now just a quick bonus, I've got a quick bonus R, and that is rethink rewards. Okay, sometimes we spend money because we think we're getting cash back we're getting 5% cash back, or we're getting 3% cash back, or we're getting two points for every dollar we spend. But in actuality, what this really is, is spending dollars to save pennies, or at most to save nickels. I mean, so I'm not against using credit cards and getting rewards, I do that, you know? So I'm not against that, but just understand that the rewards are not a reason to spend more money, because you are literally spending dollars to get back pennies. So just keep that in the back of your head, if you ever feel like, oh, I gotta get the rewards. Well, no, I'd rather you keep 99 cents in the bank to, rather than uh, you know spending a dollar to get a penny back, right? So I hope this video was helpful. Now, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Also, um, I have any number of different ways I can help you. So if you are in credit card debt, if you're trying to get out, if you wanna make sure you avoid it, if you're having any sort of, you're having trouble coming up with the money each month to make sure that you are don't get into credit card debt, if you go to familybudgetexpert.com help, 
There's any number of different ways that we can work together. You can email me, we can have a quick 30 minute free consult, all the way up through, you know, I've got a course, all the way up through complete one-on-one -on -one comprehensive budget planning. So let me know also below in the comments of the, the one that you thought was the best way to avoid credit card debt. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks, we'll see you next time.